Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled, Saved by a Hair. In all large cities, and even in smaller communities, there are unfortunates who are trying to live down a single misstep. Having served time in jail for some crime, generally a first offense, they have been paroled, released from jail with part of their sentence unserved, given a chance to try again to make useful citizens of themselves. Parolees, they are called, one misstep while on parole, and they may be returned to jail to serve out the full term of the sentence. Clever but heartless underworld characters have found the parolee a source of illicit income, and as a result, a widespread system of blackmail has sprung up. As our story opens, patrolman Dan Garrett, who in reality is the Blue Beetle, is discussing the matter with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz. You see, Doc... A fellow's up against it when these underworld vultures begin to hover over him. Why, how do you mean, Danny? Well, let's take the case of Jim Horton. He got mixed up with a bunch of young hoodlums in the neighborhood where he lived and got caught one night running away from the scene of a store robbery. Was he one of the robbers? He claimed not, but the court found him guilty and got five years. Oh, yes, yes, I, I remember the case now. Well, some friends and the parish priest got up a petition and presented it to the parole board. As a result, he was paroled with four years yet to serve. And what happened? His friends got him a pretty good job. But as soon as he got to work, the underworld got busy and tried to persuade him to come in with them and make some real money. Told him he'd never succeed honestly because of his prison record. Did he go in with them? No, no, he refused. Said he preferred to go straight. Ah, wise decision. Ordinarily, yes. But the gang wouldn't let him go straight. They wanted him to give them inside information about the place where he worked. They threatened to frame him and have his parole canceled so he'd be sent back to jail. But what can those gangsters hope to gain by such tactics? A recruit for their campaign of crime? Inside information about the place where the parolee works? Power over first offenders and so forth. And where is Horton now? Back in jail on a charge of robbery with a gun. Framed evidence, I'm certain. Hmm. Do you, uh, do you consider the case big enough to enlist the services of the Blue Beetle? Any case that affects the welfare of the unfortunate is big enough to interest the Blue Beetle. And what are you going to do? I promised Mike Manigan I'd help him investigate this case. Jim Horton's father was a pal of Mike's before he died. And Mike is interested in helping Jim. Mm, I see. Well, if there's anything I can do to help Danny, you know I'll be glad to do it. Oh, thanks, Doc. Well, I'll see you later. I'm going to meet Manigan down at police headquarters. Will you be back later to change into your Blue Beetle chain armor and mask if anything develops? I've got it all here in this briefcase so I can make a quick change on the job. Well, be careful, Danny boy. I be will, careful. Doc. So long. Where are you heading for, Mike? The old Empire Warehouse is on Dock Street. What's down there? And I got a mysterious phone call from Joe Riley to meet him down there. He's been working on the Helen Downey kidnapping case. Oh, yes. She's the uh, daughter of the parole commissioner, isn't she? Uh, that's right. What's he found? And he didn't say. He just told me to meet him in front of the... Hey! Hey, look at that car coming. See, here's where we make a pinch for speeding. Look out, Mike. Machine guns. Wait, what the... Hey, Manigan, somebody fell or was pushed out of that speeding car. Pull over to the curb, Mike. Yeah. And them guys were shooting at us. Did they get you, Mike? No. How about you, Danny? Not a scratch, but it was close. Uh, you hop out and take a look at the body, Danny. Will I see if I can trail that other car? Never mind that car now, Mike. I've got the license number. Go phone for an ambulance while I look at this poor fellow. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. There's a drugstore on the corner. Joe. Joe Riley, bound and... Joe. Joe Riley. 
Can you hear me? It's Dan Garrett. Hello, Dan. Hello, Joe. Dan, tell Manigan they made me phone him. Who made you phone? The Mulberry Hill gang. They've got the girl in the... Hey, Joe. Joe, where have they got the girl? Hmm. He's dead. Who is it, Danny? The ambulance will be late. Hey, that's Joe Riley. It was Joe Riley. Dead? Yes. Who done it, did he say? Yes, the Mulberry Hill gang. That's the gang that hangs out in Gus Heinrich's bar and grill. Well, what's the matter, officer? Oh, oh, drunk. And a cop at that. He ain't drunk. He's, He's been shot. Shot? Say, I thought I heard some shots a while back. You see, here comes the ambulance, Mike. Stand back there, mister. Give him all the air he can get. Well, then he ain't dead. He's hurt badly. Hey, 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 hey. What's the matter? Somebody hurt, I guess. Yeah, it looks like a cop. Yes. Yeah. Stand back. Stand back to no, all of you. Make way there. Over here with that stretcher. Oh, easy with him, boys. He's pretty weak from loss of blood. But, Dan, I thought you said... Don't let on, Mike. We may be able to learn more if the gang thinks Riley's still alive. What's yours, buddy? Ginger ale. And what? And nothing. Just plain ginger ale. Uh, Dan Garrett's a policeman, Ed. <laughs> Policemen don't drink. Oh, yeah? Since when? Hello, Drummond. I see you're in civilian clothes, Garrett. Is this your night off? No, it's my uniform's night off. <laughs> Clever guy, Garrett. You should be on the radio. You think so? Yes. Oh, uh, say, I hear Joe Riley in your precinct. Got bumped off tonight. Your information must have come from the wrong source. Riley's still alive, and he's talking. Really? Hmm. Well, it's nice to have seen you. I'll be getting along. And by the way, Drummond. Yeah? How do you keep your hair so black and glossy? You're no spring chicken. It's a special diet I have. Uh-huh. Spelled D-Y-E-I-T. Huh? <laughs> oh, boy, you sure are quick on the pickup. You're in the wrong business. Not for the kind of pickups I like to make. Well, if you pick up the culprits who shot Riley, recommend me as their lawyer. Anytime a crook needs a lawyer, you usually get the business, Drummond. If the price is right. Hello? Yeah, this is Hanix. Oh, hello, Drummond. What's that? Riley ain't dead. What? Dan Garrett, the cop? Oh, sure, sure, I will. I'll get some of the boys down there right away, and we'll take the girls to a new hideout. Sure, sure, right away. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Well, what do you want? I ain't hiring no entertainers for my cafe. Whom do you hire to do your kidnapping? What? Oh, so Joe Riley... Talk plenty. And so did you over that phone just now. I don't know nothing. You'd better learn something mighty quick. The Blue Beetle doesn't waste time. You got nothing on me. I am a respectable cafe owner. Come out from behind that desk, Heinrichs, before I blast you with my magic no, ray. No, 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 take it easy, Blue Beetle. I don't know nothing about Joe Riley. Where have you hidden Commissioner Downey's daughter? I don't know nothing. Of... Come on, speak up before I tear you apart. Who shot Riley and kidnapped Helen Downey? I don't know that. Get up or I'll give you some more of the same. I can't tell you. The big boss would kill me. Come on, get up on your feet. You're going to tell me what I want to know. What's or... the matter, Gus? Say, it's the Blue Beetle. Hey, Eddie, give me that bottle. Stand where you are or I'll... Ah, got him. Got the Blue Beetle with this paperweight. That's good work, Gus. He's out cold. What do we do with him? Tie him up. We'll take him out to the old... Wait a minute. Hello? Who? Yeah. What? Joe Riley was already dead when the ambulance picked him up. Then he didn't talk. Good. What? Manigan is on his lay over here? What about? Oh, my license plate on the murder car. <laughs> Say, I fixed that. Okay. Goodbye. What's the matter, Gus? The mouthpiece just phoned. Now look, Nosey. Mike Manigan is on his lay over here. You get my sedan. Drive it out to Lover's Leap and run it off the cliff into the sea. You got it? Yeah, but Be what... sure to take off the license plates first and destroy them. Also take one license plate from my roadster. But what's the idea? I'll say the murderers of Joe Riley must have stolen one of my license plates and used it on their car. Hey, the copper. 
What about the blue beetle here? I'll take care of him. Beat it, Nosey. Out the back way. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm coming. But first, I'll open the safe and make this look like a robbery. Oh, oh, it's you, Officer Mandigan. Come in. I I'm want to glad talk you came. to you, Heinrichs. I want to talk to you about Joe Riley's murder. Yeah? Your license plates are on the car. Hey, who's that on the floor? That's a little present for you, Mannigan, with my compliments. The Blue Beetle, well, I'll be... What's he doing here? I caught him robbing my safe, and I overpowered him. He's all yours, Mannigan. A suitable reward for a brave and capable guardian of the law. What will happen to the Blue Beetle now? Will he be taken to police headquarters and unmasked? Or will he escape and pick up the trail of the murderous kidnappers? Is there some connection between the kidnapping of the parole commissioner's daughter and the parole racket? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. a copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.